Hello and thank you for joining us this morning. I am Falai Kedi Suba. We'll take the headlines live on NCTV News at the hour of 8. Buari orders crackdown on drug traffickers. Kano APC endorses Buari and Ganduje for second term. In business news, Nigerian states, federal government hit by 25 billion naira revenue shortfall. And in sports, Eddie vows to take Super Eagles chance. In entertainment news, Hedy's award, awards to take place on March the 24th. And in the foreign scene, Palestinians are ready to sacrifice for Jerusalem. We'll have all the details after the short break. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. We're going to take the news in full now. President Mohamed Buhari has directed law enforcement agencies to deal decisively with all those importing, distributing, and selling illicit drugs in the country. Buhari gave the directive at an interactive meeting with religious leaders in Kano in the course of his two-day visit. The senior, spe the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Malam Garba Shehu, in a statement said, Buhari expressed concern over the growing problem of drugs abuse in the country. Now, the president assured the religious leaders that his administration was determined to urgently deal with the nar narcotics challenge facing the country. Now, Buhari also assured the religious leaders that the war against corruption would be prosecuted with the highest regards to due process and respect for human rights. Now, he asked Nigerians to be patient on this issue, saying that as an elected president, he was bound to follow the constitution. President Mohamed Buhari was with members of the Kano business community, traditional rulers and politicians in Kano state, in order to obtain complaints on behalf of residents of the state. At the town hall meeting, the Emir of Kano, Mohamedou Senussi II, commended President Buhari's efforts in the areas of fighting corruption, security, and the rival of the nation's economy. The Emir was, however, concerned about an alleged increase in cases of drug abuse in the state among youths, especially cough syrups with codeine. He also highlighted the increase in food importation across the Nigerian borders and called on the president to intensify efforts towards preventing such. Now, Sinusi stated that there is a need to ensure a proper synergy between ECOWAS member countries in order to ensure the Nigerian borders are carefully looked after to prevent illegal importation into the country. Now, on his part, President Bori asked Nigerians to continue to exercise patience as his administration is working tirelessly to revive the nation's economy. Speaking further, he also assured the people of Kano State that his administration will complete all the federal government abandoned project, adding that new ones will be initiated very soon. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has reaffirmed his strong commitment to the proposed anti-corruption courts to support the fight against corruption across the country. The president said this during an interactive session with religious leaders in Kano while on a two-day working visit to the state. In a statement issued by his senior special advisor on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, he said to strengthen ju judicial integrity and the rule of law, such courts must be manned by incorruptible judges. President Buhari also assured the religious leaders that the war against corruption would be prosecuted with the highest regards to due process and respect for human rights. Now, we're still on the fight against corruption. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission has arrested a retired Justice of the Court of Appeal, Justice Mohamed Ladan Tsamiya, for allegedly demanding 200 million naira bribe from Mr. Enamdi Orji. According to the commission, the bribe was in exchange for a favor favorable judgment in a National Assembly election case which was pending before the Amo State Judicial Division of the Court of Appeal. ICPC said that the offence, which violates Section 10 of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Act 2000, was alleged to have been committed in 2015 when the retired justice asked Mr. Orji, who is the candidate for All Progressive Grand Alliance for Arochuku Oifia Federal Constituency, to give him 200 million naira to enable him influence the court's decision in his favour. 
Now, Orji had approached the Court of Appeal in Most State Division to seek redress in a case involving an alleged inflation of the result of election in Arochuku local government area of Abia State, which he had earlier lost to his opponent, Mr. Unkole Undukwe, at the National Assembly Election Tribunal. Now, Tsimia was alleged to have convinced the appellant of getting a favorable judgment from the court upon the payment of the money. Now, Justice Tsimia has since been granted bail by the Commission upon the fulfillment of his bail conditions, even as investigation continues. In politics, the All Progressives Congress in Kano states have adopted President Muhammad Buhari as their candidate for the 2019 general elections. Leaders and members of the party in the state also endorsed Governor Abdullahi Ganduji as their sole candidate for 2019. A statement issued by the senior special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garbashi, who said the endorsements took place during the APC stakeholders meeting held on the margins of President Buhari's working visit to Kano State. The meeting was also attended by Governor Ganduje, his deputy, Professor Haf um, Hafizu Abubakar, the APC state chairman, Inua Abbas, and the members of the state executive committee, among others. According to the statement, President Buhari did not say he accepted, neither did he decline to accept the endorsement in his speech. Shehu said the party leaders were so committed to their pledge, even as they promised to procure the nomination forms for the president and threatened to sue if he declined the said endorsement. He added that President Buhari merely beamed with, with smiles and went on to underscore the need for unity in the party among the diverse peoples of Nigeria. Abbas hinged the endorsement of the president on the progress made in the last two years, especially in the fields of security, the war against corruption, and the restructuring of the economy. Speaking on a humorous note, Governor Gandhiji said the party was prepared to drag the president to court to force his acceptance of the second term ticket. In his response, President Buhari said he understood the clamor by the ordinary people on the streets who raised four fingers on each arm, meaning four plus four. He, however, stressed the need to sanitize party politics by writing it off vote buying and violence. We're going to take a short break. More news. Stay with us. My name is Uche Uduma. My name is Bella Kobe. My name is Mono Balagobo. My name is Darkon Rimdan, and you're watching Nigerian Central Television. Welcome back. We're still on politics. Ahead of the PDP National Convention, 92 aspirants have signified their intention to run for 23 offices in uh, the Saturday's National Convention of the People's Democratic Party. Now, some of the offices to be contested are National Chairman, Deputy National Chairman South, Deputy National Chairman North, Secretary, uh, Deputy National Secretary, National Legal Advisor, Deputy National Legal Advisor, National Organizing Secretary, National Youth Leader and National Publicity Secretary. A list of the aspirants obtained in Abuja showed that nine of the aspirants were running for the office of the National Chairman. The aspirants are Uche Secundus, Benga Daniel, 
Jimmy Agbaje, Rashidi Lodoja, uh, Tawhid Adedoja, Tunde Adeniran, Olabode George, Raymond Dukbesi, and Aderemi Ulu Shegun. All the chairmanship aspirants had been screened by a screening panel headed by a former governorship candidate of the party in Edo State, Mr. Osaji Ize Iyamu. Now, the screening took place at the presidential campaign office of the party, popularly known as Legacy Building, which is located at Maitama District in Abuja. Now, seven out of the nine aspirants are from the southwest. Secundus and Dokbesi are from the south-south. Moving on, Nigeria has replaced the officer leading troops fighting Boko Haram. The army said on Thursday, after a recent surge in deadly attacks in the country's remote northeast, north Major General Rogers Ibe Nicolas confirmed that a new commander has been appointed for Operation Lafia Dolly. Army spokesman Brigadier General Sani Usman said in a statement, identifying him as former military logistics chief. He takes over from Major General Ibrahim Atayuru, who was appointed to the post just seven months ago and now has been reassigned to the Army's policy and planning department. No reason was given for the change. In recent weeks, there has been an upsurge in Boko Haram attacks, which have cast further doubt on government and military claims that the jihadists are a spent force. Last weekend, two suicide bombers killed at least 13 and injured more than 50 in Bio, a town some 185 kilometers south of Borno State, capital Medugre. On November 21st, another suicide bomber blew himself up, killing at least 50 worshippers at a mosque in Mubi, a town in Adamawa State, northeast Nigeria. Now, there have also been hit and run raids targeting towns villages and military outposts in the northeast. The Boko Haram insurgency, which began in 2009, has left at least 20,000 dead and made more than 2 million others homeless. Now, in another development, the Police Service Commission has confirmed the appointment of the Commissioner of Police in Lagos State, Mr. Imohimi Edgar. This was contained in a statement issued by the PSC head, Press and Public Relations, E.K. Chuku Ani. The Commission also confirmed the appointment of five other acting police commissioners serving in various states and approved the promotion of 244 other senior officers. The promotion and confirmation were some of the high points of the PSC's 24th plenary meeting held in Abuja from December 5th to the 7th and presided over by its chairman, Sir Mike uh, Okiro. Now, the commission also approved the promotion of 15 deputy commissioners of police to the substantive rank of commissioner of police. They are Omar Lulubishi, Isaac Akimoyede, Aminu Saleh, Makama Usman, uh, Mobo, Mobolaji Fofowara, Igodo David, Dan Dajuma Ibrahim, Okon Ene, Abange John, Aminu Kwambe, Felix Ghani, Ibrahim Omar, Joseph Mukan, Wakil Mohammed, and Abdullahi Ibrahim. The appointment of acting DCP Abu Ahmad Ahmad Ahmadu was also confirmed. While 54 assistant commissioners of police were promoted to the rank of deputy commissioners, the new deputy commissioners include Fawcett Aziz, Presley Dode, Adekboju Ilori, uh, Delta State Command, Ola Dimeji, Ola Rewaju, Area Commander Metro, Abakaliki Eboyi State Command, and Ambrose Honor of the Department of Training and Development Force Headquarters, Abuja. Now, the Commission further approved the promotion of 164 Chief Superintendents of Police to rank of Assistant Commissioner of Police and eight Deputy Superintendents of Police to the rank of Superintendent. Sir o Okiro, who is also a retired Inspector General of Police, congratulated the newly promoted officers and asked them to continue to discharge their duties with respect to the rule of law and fear of God. You're still watching NCTV News at the hour of 8 and still to come, Nigerian state's uh, federal government hit by 25 billion naira revenue shortfall. And Addy vows to take Super Eagles' chance and entertainment Hedy's awards to take place on the 24th of March. And in the foreign scene, Palestinians are ready to sacrifice for Jerusalem. Details after the short break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. We're going to move right into business news now. Nigerian states, the federal and local government in October shared 532.7 billion naira, which shows a decline of 25.3 billion naira when compared to what they shared in September. The permanent secretary of the ministry, Mr. Mahmoud Issa Dutse, said this in Abu Jawa, briefing newsmen on the outcome of the monthly federal account allocation committee. Issa Dutsi attributed the decline to the decrease in revenue from export sales of $42.94 million due to a decrease in crude oil production by 1.25 million barrels. Now, he said that even though the average price of crude oil in increased from $46.29 per barrel to $48.60 per barrel, it was not enough to make up for the loss in production. Now, the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMEN, has said the long queues for petrol in some major cities in the country was partly due to panic buying and hoarding of products by some depot owners and marketers. Speaking after a brief meeting with officials of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, IPMEN officials led by the National Secretary Al-Haji Danladi Basali said some depot owners were taking advantage of increased demand for fuel during the festive period to create artificial scarcity. IPMEM commanded efforts by the NNPC GMD, Dr. Mekenti Baru, and the managing director of the Nigerian Petroleum Marketing Company, Al-Haji Umar Ajia, in restoring sanity in the system. He urged the, P, the DPR and other regulators in the petroleum downstream sector to exercise their civic responsibility by increasing supervision on marketers at all levels. We're going to move into sports news. Portland Timbers center forward Fernando Adi once again declares his intention to lace his boots for Nigeria. The goal poacher who has made his mark in the MLS expressed his commitment to play for the Super Eagles if given the opportunity. The 27-year-old has proved beyond reasonable doubt that he could be an added advantage to the Nigerian main squad, having played for some notable clubs in Europe and America. Currently, he's the all-time highest goal scorer for Portland Timbers. He's his goals helped Portland Timbers clinch the MLS League title two seasons ago for the first time in the history of the club and was subsequently rewarded with a long-time contract which placed him as the highest earning Nigerian in the MLS. Adi, who joined Portland Timbers from FC Copenhagen of Denmark on loan, might not be playing in the big leagues, but believes he has what it takes to make the Super Eagles squad to the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Now, he came close to acquiring his first cap for Nigeria last year when he was invited for the nation's cup qualifier against Egypt in Kaduna and Cairo, but was not listed as the interim coach. Samson Saisa preferred to go with some already known players. According to Saisa, Adi was good, but he was a new player to the entire team, and there was no time to blend. Now, Nigerian table tennis player Aruna Quadri has set new record as he's ranked best African uh, ITTF player. The 29-year-old ranked 21 in the latest ITTF ranking released by the World Table Tennis Ruling Body. Quadri surpassed his best of 25th in the ranking to displace Egypt's Omar Asar as Africa's best ranked player in the world. Following her victories over top ranked players at the Swedish Open, Quadri amassed 50 points to improve from 2457 to 2507 points. And in entertainment news, the next edition of the Hedy's Awards, aimed at honoring musicians, performers, producers, writers, and other professionals for their exploits in the year 2017 will be held on the 24th of March 2018. The organizers have announced that. Organizers of awards made the announcement on Wednesday on their official website. According to the executive producer of the event, Ayo Anima Shon, Nigeria's longest-running music honors event will return to the first quarter of the year and new categories would be added to the awards to reflect the realities of today's music and entertainment industry. Now, Anima Shon, in a statement, said, The year in review has also been reviewed to adequately accommodate more music materials released between July 2016 to December 2017. Subsequently, the year in review will be January to December of each year. Past editions of the award ceremony had been moved from March, when it originally debuted in 2006 to November, December. But in the forthcoming edition, it has been moved back to March. 
Now, more troubles seem to be brewing for pop singer Uluwa Tobi Lola Daniel Ani Dube, also known as Kiss Daniels, even has his case with his former record label, G Worldwide Entertainment, regarding a breach of contract continues to unfold. It was recently brought to the notice of the public that both parties involved had been advised that there would be no need joining issues on legal principles on media as the matter is before the court of law. According to information, a federal high court has given an order that status quo antebellum under the contract be maintained by the parties pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice filed in the suit. The import of the order being that the state under which the parties existed under the contract should be preserved until the court makes a determination of the motion on notice filed by the company. Now, information also revealed that the artist and his team have chosen not to see the order of the court as service of the process was evaded on the morning of December 5th, 2017 when he was informed by his security guard that a court official had a package for him. On the foreign scene, hundreds of Palestinians marched through Bethlehem in a day of rage. Protest against Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. His anger over the controversial decision continues to spread across the occupied Palestinian territories. Israeli military forces shot tear gas and rubber bullets at Palestinian protesters in Bethlehem, and at least seven youths were injured in the clashes, including one small child. Men, women, and children participated in the March, which is among several held in the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem, as well as in major cities across the region throughout the day. Palestinian leaders also declared a general strike across the Palestinian territories. New Zealand's former Prime Minister has criticized Australia's treatment of refugees detained on Manus Island, saying it needs to show humanity and allow her country to resettle some of them. Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has repeatedly snubbed New Zealand's offer to take in 150 out of the 600 refugees who are currently held at detention centres on Papua New Guinea's remote Pacific Island. Up until late last month, more than 300 men had barricaded themselves, one of the decommissioned camps on the island, registering their location after a series of violent attacks against refugees by locals. The men restored to drinking rainwater and dug their own wells in order to survive while pleading for other countries to take them in. Manus Island Police used uh, stomped the camp on November 23rd, and according to eyewitnesses, accounts used long metal poles to beat the refugees before dragging them out and relocating them to another site. We're going to take a short break before we round up our news segment with uh, our major headlines. We'll be right back. of eight will take a recap of our major headlines. President Mohamed Buhari has directed law enforcement agencies to deal decisively with all those importing, distributing and selling illicit drugs in the country. The All Progressives Congress in Kano State have adopted President Mohamed Buhari as their candidate for the 2019 general elections. And in business news, Nigerian states, the federal and local government in October shared 532.7 billion naira, which shows a decline of 25.3 billion when compared to what they shared in September. In sports news, Portland Timbers center forward Fernando Adi once again declares his intention to lace his boots for Nigeria. And in entertainment news, the next edition of the Hedy's Awards aimed at honoring musicians, performers, producers, writers, and other professionals for their exploits in the year 2017 will be held on the 24th of March 2018, the organizers have announced. In the foreign scene, hundreds of Palestinians marched through Bethlehem in a day of rage, protest against the Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. That's it for this morning's news. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I am Falake Adesiba wishing you a pleasant morning.